The University of Groningen research shows that customers have become way more price sensitive during crisis. This so-called price elasticity shows that if you lower your price with 10% that would lead to 11.3% more sales. That was a decade ago, but currently it's even 17.3% more sales. And therefore lowering your prices may be a good idea. Let's use an experiment to test this effect live. Viewers can join during this video and pay accordingly. Let's start our price at 100% now. Hi, this is Jelle Bamba from Groningen. Can you hear me? Well, could you update me on what is dynamic pricing? I will distinguish two different forms of dynamic pricing. So time-based dynamic pricing, meaning that all consumers in the market pay different prices depending on the, depending on the uh, time of day. So this could mean prices change during day during a day in the online shop. The other form is about consumer-based dynamic pricing. So meaning, depending on consumer characteristics, like for example your purchasing history, you will get offered a different price. Uh, and uh, dynamic pricing in practice, how does that work? Dynamic pricing can actually uh, drive firm profitability. Let's see how many attendants we currently have and uh, let's lower the price with 25% now. Hey Jelle, willingness to pay is also a concept that needs to be discussed here. Hi, um, could you tell me what is willingness to pay? Willingness to pay basically means how high can the price be until people are still willing to buy the product. So let's say I, am, I want to buy a movie and my willingness to pay for that movie is 10 euros. That means I would not buy the movie if it would cost 10 euros and one cent. This is the same as, as the economic concept of, of a reservation price. Because we understand very well how consumers react to monetary prices, we know what their price elasticity is, we know what determines price elasticity, but we are only beginning to understand how sensitive consumers are to providing data and, and privacy. Let's see, how many attendants do we currently have? And uh, let's lower the price with 50% now. Ayala, hey don't forget to ask him about value-based pricing. Hi, um, could you tell us maybe how online retailers use this concept? Knowing the reservation price uh, really enables you as a company to determine the best price and to gain the most profit. It enables you to manage your stock and ask, uh, initiate refund support. Um, so you can use linear regression for this but you can now also use extreme gradient boosting if you know the right method. Um, the speed and accuracy of extreme gradient boosting is superior to linear regression and it's now also interpretable. And it's really hard to, um, to estimate how much increased revenue it would give you as a company. But combining the previous experiences and uh, just the experience of the manager with these models would, in my opinion, definitely lead to increased revenue. Hey, how about lowering the price and let's make this video completely for free? Jelle, what about the B2B context? Oh, yeah. B2C setting is different from a B2B setting uh, when implementing a digital pricing, mainly in the following. Uh, in a B2C setting, you have to uh, present your new pricing approach publicly, absolutely transparently, and all the way to all its details uh, in a matter of a, a launch, a big launch at a certain point of time. Uh, you have not the comfort of learning from a case-to-case -case basis as you do in a B2B, uh, and there is, of course, much less space for error. Uh, on top of that, uh, consumer laws, protecting consumer protecting laws are much stricter, and consumers typically have uh, much less capacity, motivation, uh, to study your new approach, new pricing approach thoughtfully. We recommend to, to, to the ski users to start with it uh, as soon as they can, uh, not to wait to make things perfect. And then the final experiment. We pay you guys 50 euros to join now. 
<laughs> Whoa! Over 10 million viewers! <laughs>